Ciao, ciao. morning and uh, welcome to this uh, Dr. Honoris Causa ceremony that is organized uh, today to honor Professor uh, Mario Manasero from Polytechnic of Milano. On uh, behalf of the Senate of the Technical University of Civil Engineering, I will uh, chair this uh, event. And first I will introduce my, my colleagues in the board of this uh, meeting. Professor Radu Vatereanu, the Rector of the Technical University of Civil Engineering, Bucharest. Uh, Professor Madalina Stoyan, Vice Rector of our University. Professor Laurenciu Lece, Vice Rector of our University. Uh, Professor Alexandru Dimache, the Dean of the Faculty of uh, Hydrotechnics. And uh, Professor Ernest Bolini, the Director of the Geotechnics uh, and uh, Foundation Department. Uh, they are those who initiated this uh, this uh, procedure and uh, event that we are celebrating today. So uh, it is a great honor and pleasure for us to uh, organize this uh, for our long-term friend and colleague. Uh, we are sorry that the pandemics do not allow us to have a, a full uh, room uh, as you deserve and as uh, such event uh, normally deserve. We are happy that we can meet and we can be face to face and not in an online uh, approach. And thank you for the effort of uh, coming uh, here in such hard uh, times. Now I will uh, invite Professor uh, to present the Laudatio. Thank you very much. Dear Mr. Rector, dear Mr. President of the Senate of our University, dear members of the Senate, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Faculty of Hydrotechnics and the Department of Geotechnical and Foundation Engineering from the Technical University of Civil Engineering Bucharest, it is great honor for me 
to present the speech Laudatio in honor of Professor Mario Manasero on the occasion of awarding him with the title of Doctor Honoris Causa. Professor Manasero, Mario Manasero is a personality with remarkable contributions to the development of the geotechnical engineering in general and environmental geotechnics in particular, a special contribution in which he combined the theory and the practice for the realization of projects in geotechnical conditions of great complexity. He promoted the profession and the young geotechnical engineers, and he supported the geotechnical community from Romania. Professor Mario Manasero was born in August, 2nd of August, 1956. In 1980, he graduated the Politecnico di Torino in the field of civil engineering. And in 1987, he obtained the title of Doctor of Civil Engineering from the same institution. Both titles were obtained under the guidance of Professor Mikhail Yamilkovsky, also a remarkable personality in the field of geotechnical engineering, and also a doctor honoris causa of our university. After graduating, he combined practical and academic activity, at first working mainly as a design engineer and with the experience gained, moving more towards the academic area. So in 1981, he was project engineer at Studio Geotecnico Italiano, then partner as IGES, president and managing director of Ingegneria Geotecnica, during visiting professor at Ancona University where he had a course on geotechnical aspects of landfill design and remedial works, visiting professor at Colorado State University, Fort Collins, the course was on environmental geotechnics, Associate Professor of Politecnico di Torino from 1998 and from 2002 full professor. First in the uh, Department of Land, Environment and Geo Geoengineering and right now in the Department of Structural Geotechnical and Building Engineering. He is also a member of the Scientific Board of the PhD Geotechnical Engineering School from Politecnico di Torino. Among the large-scale projects in which he is involved, a few I will read for you right now. He is geotechnical consultant for ENI, the leader Italian company of energy supply, oil and gas, for underground and underwater geoenvironmental problem, problems related to industrial landfill design, characterization and remediation of polluted site, seismic characterization, foundations, land, tailings, and earthquake stability. This is happening since 2013. He was leader of the remediation design team of Borgognone Municipal Solid Waste Landfill of 1.5 million cubic meters, <coughs> leader of the design team of Fornovo Industrial Solid Waste Landfill, geotechnical designer of a vertical expansion of the Terni Landfill, monitoring and stability analysis of hydrolensites. Uh, barrier containment performance evaluation of the Saroj plant cut off wall, uh, design of stabilization me measurements of the landslides of Tolentino landfill, uh, design of stabilization methods for landslides of San Arcangelo, Trimonte, semi permeable, permeable confining system and complementary remediation technique designed for the polluted subsoil of a coastal oil raffinery plant. Geotechnical consultant of the Victoria State Environmental Protection Agency from Melbourne, Australia, for the preparation of the general plan for solid waste management and landfill for the review of the landfill design guidelines. The leader of the geotechnical design team for the construction of a new harbor in Israel, leader of the geotechnical design team for the reclamation and rehabilitation of the runway system of the Leonardo da Vinci International Airport, airport from Rome, and I will just read leader of design team of the Barikala Hazard Waste Landfill. Professional and scientific recognition, both nationally and internationally, begins since 1990, when Professor Mario Manasero received Best Paper Award at the Third International Symposium on Pressure Matter Test. He is member of the Re Regional European Technical Committee, number eight, Geotechnics of Landfills and Remedial Boards of ISSMG. 
member of the presidential board of the Italian Geotechnical Society since 1997, chairman of the technical committee 2015, environmental geotechnics from 2001 up to 2014. He was visiting professor at the Environmental Geotechnics School of Excellence of Ghent University, Belgium, member of the expert consulting board of the Italian Ministry of the Environment for the environmental impact evaluation of the main national projects, member, member of the technical committee established by the Genova, Gen, Genova municipality for the tender project evaluation for the procurement procurement of reconstruction works of the collapsed Olchevera Bridge. Proof of international recognition for the regular activity of promoting geotechnical engineering in 2017, he becomes the vice president for Europe of the International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, a professional society with approximately 20,000 individual members from 90, 90 member countries, including Romania, I think was one of the first countries who sent the open support to Professor Mario Manasseo. He supported the candidacy of the, and later participated in the 25th edition of the European Young Geotechnical Engineers Conference, which took place in Sibiu in June 2016, uh, where our university was co organizer together with the Romanian Society for Geotechnical and Foundation Engineering. And he supported also the candidacy of this, this society for the 17th edition of the Danube European Conference of Geotechnical Engineering. Wow. The candidacy won in 2018, and the conference will take place in 2023. Wow. In the list of most important invited works of Professor Mario Manasero, we find three papers that were presented in Romania on the occasion of some events organized by our university and geotechnical society. Team lecture at the first international conference on geotechnical engineering, education and training, which was held in Sinaia in June 2000. Keynote lecture at the 25th European Young Geotechnical Engineers Conference on Sibiu. And the second Kerry Rowe lecture, who was held at the uh, Ninth, 19th International Conference on Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering in Seoul, then at the 8th International Congress on Environmental Geotechnics in Hangzhou, and one year later in 2018 at the first Romanian Symposium on, geotechnical, uh, on Environmental Geotechnics. Other invited lectures presented on the occasion of prestigious events, uh, Professor Jean-Pierre Giroux Annan lecture in 2019, Keynote lecture on the second international symposium on coupled phenomena in environmental geotechnics, <coughs> 2017, in Leeds. Opening lecture, Joe Chicago International Conference on Sustainability, Energy, and Geovironment. Uh, team lecture, seventh international congress on environmental geotechnics in Australia. Uh, final lecture, a 15th European conference on soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering in Athens, 2011. Keynote lecture at the 6th International Congress on Environmental Geotechnics, New Delhi, 2010. State of the Art Report, Millennium Conference, GOM 2000. International Congress jointly organized by ISHMG, International Society on World Mechanics, Melbourne, Australia. And opening lecture on waste disposal design, 9th Young Geotechnical Engineers Conference, GENT, September 95. Uh, state of the art report on solid waste classification system, first international conference on environmental geotechnics, Edmonton, Canada, 94. Professor Mario Manasero was part of the organizing or scientific committees at several prestigious events. Uh, the 17th European Conference on Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, Reykjavik, 2019 member of the International Advisory Committee of the 7th International Congress of Environmental Geotechnics, I think also eight in Hangzhou, uh, chairman of the first international symposium on coupled phenomena in environment, environmental geotechnics held in Torino, chairman of the organizing and scientific board at 
21st, 22nd, and 23rd edition of Geotechnical Conference in Turin. Chairman of Technical Station Waste Disposal and Management, 16 International Conference on Soil Mechanics, Osaka. Member of the Scientific Advisory of the Organization of the International Congress on Recent Measure Case History in Environmental Geotechnics, organized by the Polytechnique de Montreal. So, in conclusion, Professor Mario Manassero has been involved in geotechnical research, consulting, and teaching for over 40 years. Research areas include, in particular, soft soil consolidation, soil improvement and reinforcement method, compacted clay and composite liner systems for landfills, containment system for polluted subsoil, mechanical behavior of industrial waste, vacuum extraction of subsoil pollutants, chemophysical interaction between pore fluids and the soil skeleton, multi-phase coupled flows and associated transport phenomena, is open lecturer, invited speaker, and general reporter in some of the most important international symposium and conferences to devoted to, especially to environmental geotechnics. He is author of more than 150 papers, manuals, and book chapters which have been, which have been published by the leading international journals and scientific publishers. He is a geotechnical consultant, member of the geotechnical design team for various and complex projects, especially in the field of environmental geotechnics. He is a close friend of our university, which he visited before the year 2000. 1995, first time I believe. And he was part of the team that laid the foundation of the collaboration with, within the Erasmus project between our university and Politecnico di Torino, and which opened many other collaboration with prestigious universities in Europe. The arguments presented in Laudatio describe the activity of a personality from the field of geotechnical engineering, which is why the Senate of the Technical University of Civil Engineering in Bucharest grants to Professor Mario Manacero the title of Dr. Honoris Thank you. Thank you for this uh, detailed uh, laudatio. Uh, for sure, there are many other things that could not be mentioned due to time constraints. Uh, it is a, a proof of the long and uh, successful activity. And uh, we are honored to award you this uh, title. Now we will uh, invite you to dress with uh, ceremony robe. Yeah. Stefan. And uh, I invite the rector of our university to read the Dr. Van Eyskauser diploma and uh, Thank you, Chairman. It is my great honor to read the diploma awarded today as the highest recognition of an outstanding academic career and research career and professional career to Professor Mario Manacero from Politecnico di Torino. So the University Senate confers to Professor Mario Manacero the academic title of Dr. Honoris Causa of the Technical University of Civil Engineering in Bucharest as an appreciation for outstanding contributions to the development of environmental geotechnics, as a recognition of the manner of combining theory and practice through direct and responsible participation to the accomplishment of a large number of projects in geotechnical conditions of special complexity, for the activity in the service of the promotion of geotechnical engineering at international level, for the support granted to the geotechnical and academic community within the Technical University of Civil Engineering of Bucharest, 
this way contributing to the increase of its visibility at international level. And the diploma issued by the Senate is signed on the behalf of the university by the rector of the university and the president of the Senate. Now I will hand over the diploma to Professor Mario Manasello. Thanks. Thank you. And I invite him to deliver a speech and a small part of the collective wisdom he shared during these years. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for this uh, award, and uh, it's uh, my, my pleasure and privilege really to thank the Technical University of Civil Engineering of Bucharest, the uh, Rector University, the Dean, the President of the Senate, and uh, all uh, the teachers of this uh, of this university. But we experienced a very long cooperation uh, starting many years ago, as already mentioned, and uh, uh, with the Polytechnic Victory. Uh, I would like also to thank, in particular, the group, the geotechnical group uh, of the hydrotechnical department uh, for, uh, for, this, uh, for this award and for this recognition of uh, our very uh, fruitful and satisfactory and pleasant work together in, uh, in uh, all these years. And in particular, I would, I, I would add to the thanks also uh, Professor Manolio, that was uh, uh, my mentor, one of my mentors with Professor Jokowski, that uh, started with the idea of this cooperation program many years ago. Uh, I have to confess you immediately that uh, I am uh, uh, much more emotional than uh, during my first uh, uh, PhD, uh, during my first doctorate, uh, and, uh, and this is uh, because uh, this, uh, this, uh, this award is, uh, I think this award really uh, important uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a big honor and privilege for me to receive it. Now, uh, let's go to technical aspects uh, and uh, I tried to prepare a presentation um, that uh, can be in some way uh, uh, understood and uh, in some way appreciated also for people not uh, specialized in the geotechnical field. Um, then I'm going to, this with, to deal with my matter uh, that is the geotechnical engineering by focusing on the peculiar aspect uh, of the soil behavior. Uh, paradoxically, as shown in this, uh, in this slide, uh, the natural disaster uh, that our discipline aims to mitigate or avoid and the collapses of uh, structures that we try to prevent are much more spectacular and, uh, uh, and, and uh, known in brackets that 
the prevention geotechnical work that we have to set up in order to mitigate or to avoid this kind of, uh, of failure and disaster. Therefore, I decided in the first part of my speech to deal about the problem caused by the complex and peculiar hydrochemomechanical behavior of soils that geotechnical engineers have always to face or to cope with. Thereafter, the second part of my presentation will be devoted to an example, if we will have enough time, really, uh, that uh, where he was uh, involved, uh, both from the professional and the, the research point of view. This is the layout of my lecture, an introductory part with the definition and introduction to the soil mechanical behavior and to the related peculiar phenomenological aspect. Second point, and the third point are two points uh, linked in terms of uh, the fabric word. Fabric is a word that I will repeat many times during my presentation. And the basic meaning is uh, the fabric of a soil is uh, the, the position, the relative position, the arrangement of the particle inside the porous particulate medium that we are uh, studying. And so, uh, in the second point, I will deal with the, 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 the role played by the fabric in coarse granite soils, uh, with particular reference to seismically induced, induced uh, liquefaction. In the third point, uh, I again uh, going to examine the role played by the fabric in fine granite soil, referring in particular to the failure of tailings and uh, of, uh, also of uh, natural deposits failure tailings in particular is a very uh, big problem today uh, due to the number, the huge number of failures worldwide with the consequent fatalities and uh, a huge damage cost of for repair and damages. The last point, uh, if we have time, I repeat, is uh, the illustration of, uh, of uh, one of my involvement in this uh, kind of remediation uh, concerning the road airport uh, and in particular the runway number three. The first point uh, is devoted to the introduction of uh, the uh, aims and activities, uh, typical activity of the geotechnical engineering. The geotechnical engineering studies the behavior of soil and rocks uh, subjected to action belonging to two fundamental categories. Can be subdivided in two fundamental categories. The anthropogenic action uh, that includes uh, the interaction of building, dams, uh, excavation, tunneling, the slag and waste deposit, uh, and also the control of subsoil pollutant uh, of uh, this manufacture with, uh, the, uh, with the soil. The second group uh, includes uh, the natural action due to the change in pre-existing equilibrium conditions. Groundwater oscillation, climatic variation, and another important hot spot to, in, in our times, and landslide. So, for a correct and uh, effective uh, performance, in the following point are listed uh, the activity and the path followed during the uh, geotechnical design of uh, a remediation work. First point, knowledge of the physical, chemical, and hydromechanical phenomena that develop in multi-phase particle media, characterized by a very high complexity. Second step, ability to model such phenomena with the tools of the mathematical and numerical analysis. Third, point, uh, joining the first two, the ability to translate the quantification of the theoretical models into operational project then guarantee efficiency and safety of human work and effectively are able to mitigate the risk of the natural disaster. So as I mentioned, soil and rock are multi-phase particular media with very complex behavior. They consist of three phases, a solid phase with different mineralogical origin, the liquid phase, 
that uh, include uh, usually water, but uh, it is possible to have other fluid, for example, in the area of polluted sites. Uh, the gaseous phase is the third phase with air and possible other gases, uh, in particular in the location of the polluted sites. We uh, are used in the geotechnical field to uh, distinguish two main, roughly to distinguish two main categories of soil, the coarse grained soil, sand and gravel, and the fine grained soil, seeds and clay. These two groups of soil have many common points in terms of basic behavior. They obey to the same fundamental principle of physical chemical mechanics, but they show also very important differences uh, in the behavior when they are, they are uh, stressed uh, in, with uh, different boundary, in different boundary conditions, under different boundary conditions. This scheme reproduces a set of clay grain uh, together with the interstitial fluid and the related ions in solution. The first thing that you you can notice is the shape of the clay, the clay particle. It is not rounded as in the case of coarse grain and the soil sand and garments, but as a form of a platelet or lamella with a negative charge, uh, with a prevailing negative charge on the condensed surface that interacts with the possibility ions in solution. The different kind of interaction of these phases of these elements uh, uh, that the soil consists, consists of, um, can be grouped in a first approximation in two categories uh, in the top of the slide. Let me set up my pointer. The top of the slide, you can see the group of uh, the electro chemical action that include the cation and ions and anions with their electrical charge, the electrostatic forces, attraction or repulsion due to the, to the charge on the surface of the particle, and the electromagnetic and chemical osmotic interaction. Of course, I cannot go into detail about this. The mechanical field include uh, the more intuitive and known uh, kind of interaction between the phases of the soil, the contact stresses, normal and frictional stresses, the mass forces, and the core pressure of the water. Uh, during uh, the deposition phase, these elements are responsible of the formation of the so-called fabric or structure of the deposit. The arrangement of the particular that can be in touch or not in touch each other. And are able uh, this, uh, this aspect to identify particular arrangement of the particle that make this deposit, the uh, fabric collapsible deposit, collapsible or metastable. This kind of soil can produce the most dangerous and catastrophic geotechnical failures. Just to make more, uh, more, more clear my previous concept, let me see a sort of uh, metaphoric example throughout a short movie. The card of this house of cards simulate the grain of uh, or platelet of a clay with a high volume of void, and this is what can happen even in presence of extremely low stressing, stresses acting on the structure of this metastable structure or fabric of these elements. The structure collapses completely once the phenomenon of instability of the solid skeleton is uh, triggered. As you can see, you have uh, for a uh, a unsign practically insignificant action for this kind of structure, a dramatic and sudden collapse, as can happen, uh, we will see also the real scale for uh, the normal source. 
Now, let's go back to the real soil by making the distinction from coarse granite soil and fine granite soil, and to consider the behavior of firstly, the behavior of sand deposit and under seismic action. In this case, in this movie, you can see a loose sand that uh, suffered the type of collapse of the house of carbon shown before, but only in the case of in the, for the coarse material of high energy under dynamic and cyclic stresses, such as those given, for instance, for the earthquake uh, that, uh, and the consequent liquefaction of the deposit. This collapse of fully saturated sand and gravel goes by the name of course of li li uh, liquefaction. Under the static load condition, no beer capacity problem occurred, as you can see in this uh, small scale, scale example. We simulate the deposition of uh, loose sand in fully saturated conditions. Then we try to, to load, simulating a, a small foundation in a statical way, statical monotonic way. And uh, the small scale foundation is able to resist to this uh, without a significant settlement to this uh, action, to this load. Now, the same foundation, only charging with his uh, with his self weight, is completely sunk down in the liquefied sand. This is a typical behavior of a collapsing fabric of the sand. It doesn't depend only on the void ratio, on the ratio between the solid, the, the void and the solid phase. It doesn't depend on the confining stresses that are the two state but well known on the in the geotechnical world, world uh, the, the well known state parameters as uh, defined by the Kantley model family, the Grand Pagrave more theoretical model uh, In this case, uh, it is possible to have the same state parameter, but different fabric, different uh, uh, arrangement of the particle in order to, uh, to, to get this uh, uh, very uh, dangerous and sometimes catastrophic behavior of the soil. That is what we have to focus in, uh, in terms of uh, geotechnical design in the particular case where you have this kind of actions as dynamic. Okay. If we move from the small scale to the large scale, we can have a look to the same phenomena um, during, for example, in this uh, movie, uh, during uh, an earthquake, uh, one of the very strong earthquakes that occurred in the last uh, tens of years in Kobe, Japan. And, and you can see, in this moment, uh, there is uh, a, an acting earthquake, and you can see the water that, as a sort of a spring, comes out uh, from the pavement joints. And uh, this water comes out uh, uh, not because there is a, 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 an original higher hydraulic head, but just because the collapsible structure and the decrease of the sand, the decrease in volume generating sediment of the sand, and as in the case of a squeezed sponge, the sediment of the sand uh, squeeze out the, the, the water of the, the, the groundwater from the subsoil. And the water pressure in, uh, in some location can be rather important. As in the case of uh, small springs. Mm -hmm. 
another example uh, of an earthquake uh, uh, damage of earthquake damages for the perfection of of, uh, of sand and silty sand in uh, Christchurch in New Zealand. We have a lot of uh, strong earthquake in the, in the last time in in New Zealand, and uh, that involves uh, uh, some areas very well monitored, and uh, this allows uh, to distinguish, for example, in a certain area with uh, the same uh, sand deposit in terms of uh, voids and confining stress, the state parameter, the classical state parameter, in the same area, different behavior in different location, just due to the influence of the fabric of this, let's say, uh, concept of fabric, the arrangement of the grain of this deposit. In this slide, the result of the application of a numerical discrete element model approach to a set of particles able to simulate a virtual test on a sand or gravel specimen is shown. The figures allow to appreciate the low density of the solid phase and to observe also the crushability of the grain. This is a theoretical model, a numerical model. Uh, of the grain, uh, the possibility of the grain, and also to quantify, for example, the number of particle of contact per particle. This is an example for the sand of uh, fabric parameter. The fabric parameter, in this case, the, the, the name is uh, uh, coordination number, the number of contact, uh, the average number of contact per particle in the particle set give you an idea of uh, the possibility of brittle collapsible behavior of this ensemble of, uh, of particle. Unfortunately, the discrete element model cannot be extended in an easy manner to the full scale problem. We can simulate virtually a, a laboratory test but it's very, uh, it's very computational burden to uh, burdensome to have uh, to use uh, the discrete element method to model the large scale, uh, the large scale problems. So we have to to, to find, uh, we have to identify some uh, overall parameter some parameter able to synthesize and to quantify this behavior in order to be able to come back to the continuum mechanics, to the final element model that are much more easy and handleable for, for the uh, simulation of the full-scale problem. And in this slide, it's also possible to appreciate the load-bearing load network, the, the, Number the, the contacts and, uh, and uh, also the truss network. Let's go to the role played by the fabric in the fine grinded soils, uh, looking to the failure of tailings and the natural deposit. Also, then, also the clay and the fine grinded soil in general. Uh, can have a metastable, uh, a metastable collapsible structure or fabric. And in this case, we can observe, for example, taking into account the last failure of the Tamix dam worldwide, that uh, also in this case we can have really catastrophic consequences from this kind of behavior of fine and soil. This is an example. Uh, uh, of one of the dramatic failure that uh, takes to, took place in Hungary uh, with the failure of this uh, embankment that confines the red mass from a close uh, aluminium production plant. And uh, in this case, uh, the consequence of uh, the leave, of the leave failure is the liquefaction of the red mass inside this deposit with the runout that reaches distance in the order of 40 kilometers from the original location, involving one million of cubic meters of inner 
uh, of uh, material uh, then run out uh, from the deposit. And this uh, is a uh, view of a view of the uh, of the damages uh, that you can imagine uh, uh, due to the, the run out of this red mud uh, that involves uh, area in the order of uh, tens of square kilometers. This is a second interesting example, fully documented by a movie. This is also more interesting than in the other case. Um, that concerned the well known Benito Rodriguez tailing located in the Minas Gerais area of the Brazil. 60 million of cubic meters of the liquefied mud were able to reach the Atlantic Ocean at a distance of 300 kilometers from their original position. And this uh, is the movie that shows the, the beginning and the progress of, uh, of this uh, slide that, that involves again tailings from uh, a, an iron mine and these mines, 60 cubic uh, million of cubic meter was able to reach the Atlantic coast along a path of 300 kilometers. Then we have, in this case, a lot of fatalities, as you can imagine, in the valley, in the village along the valley of this uh, tailing. And uh, we have also uh, a huge amount of damage in terms of cost and environmental impact in a large area of the Atlantic Ocean. Collapsible soil, collapsible fabric. Not only the fresh deposit, the young and fresh deposit, deposit as the tailings are, but also old natural deposit can, uh, can be subjected to this kind of failure. And another, another well-documented case is the case of Rissa in Norway, where in uh, this case, uh, the, the, it is important to point out for this natural deposit that the combined electrochemical behavior played, uh, that play up, played a fundamental role to give rise to a collapsible fabric of the natural clay deposit. That during the geological history, get in touch before with marine salts during its formation process and thereafter was permeated by fresh water coming from the closed mountains. This process of permeation with fresh water of uh, a collapsible uh, structure of this natural clay leads to a huge dramatic retrogressive instability mechanism of the natural coastal deposit. The consequences of the failures were very important in terms of material damage, cost, and uh, fortunately, but for not without any fatality in this case. As you can see, after a certain weight, the clay sample, uh, the quick clay sample, is not able to resist to, to the weight imposed. And this is uh, just a function of the salt content of the pore fluid. Then in the case of low salt content, as in the case of the permeation of this, uh, of this example of by fresh water of the natural clay, the resistance of this uh, house of card, if you want, decreases. Uh, the resistance at the contact decreases, provoking the contractive behavior and the collapse of the, of the, of the structure of the soil. But if you had salt, you can uh, go back from a liquid state to a solid state, uh, to a solid state. And these uh, are some uh, animation and movie of what happens uh, in this location. Just due to a small excavation, the, 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 the problem started from uh, a small excavation and uh, a small embankment made by the material of the excavation along the coast of the lake. 
after some time, but I mean few days, there was a failure of this small part of the environment. And this failure proceed retrogressively involving more and more part of the quick clay deposit of this collapsible clay deposit with a particular fabric that could be fully compared with the house of card that I showed you before. These are some view of the retrogressive uh, action given by this, uh, by the initial failure. The clay flow into the lake of fresh water coming from the bed mountains and continue to expand in a bigger and bigger area up to involve, as we are going to see, also the houses, the, the house, houses of the village uh, located in this in this area. I am just waiting for uh, some new of the houses uh, that uh, flow together with the clay toward the lakes, the lake. Sustained provisionally by the essicated crust of uh, this uh, deposit of quick clay. Still a few seconds, okay. Here we are. These are the houses traveling at a speed of 40 km per hour, around 40 km per hour toward the lake for the upstream part of the deposit. And this is a real uh, impressive view of the consequences of uh, the metastable uh, brittle mechanical behavior of a collapsible fabric of the soil. What is the key factor? This is a, a matter probably of expert, but I would like to take this possibly very quickly. What is the key factor that uh, allow us, uh, in many cases, to anticipate, to predict this kind of behavior of the soil? It's uh, in most cases, uh, mm, just use a, full, a, a rather simple test in undrained condition of the clay. If you discover during the test that in correspondent, exactly in correspondent of uh, the peak strength of your material, you have a sudden decrease of the strength, not necessarily close to zero, but in correspondence of this peak, if you find a sudden increase of the pore pressure of the soil, you are in the case 99% of collapsible structure. Then this is an investigation that the geotechnical engineer must do in case of possible problems of this, of this kind. And you can also say to me, but I can have also a peak resistance in dense sand. Yes. You can have the peak resistance in a dense sense that behaves uh, on the line of the of the Campley model family, but only together with dilatant behavior and not collapsing and decreasing of volume at the peak after the peak of the resistance. And this is the key difference. Also, in that case, you have, I can say, a, a, a Soft and, uh, softening uh, behavior, but it's not so dangerous, it's not so dramatic as in the case of collapsible 
extractor of your deposit. Just a warning, if you want. So, uh, in, uh, in conclusion of uh, the, the, the main part of the speech, uh, I can say that uh, uh, what I can say about that, in, from my point of view, uh, some of the new modeling frontiers in the geotechnical engineering. The new modeling frontiers have to focus in the need of identify fabric parameter to integrate and support the basic state parameters of the traditional Cantley model that you do. So the point, the main point for reaching or for trying to, to reach uh, a satisfactory results in this trend, first point, uh, uh, it is necessary to carry out experimental activity involving a small and large scale laboratory field test and also to analyze monitoring results of previous cases. Second point, the theoretical state studies able to compare and combine numerical model based on both continuum and particle mechanics. So, carry out basically virtual laboratory test with the discrete element model, the particle mechanics uh, program, the particle mechanics models, and then after the identification of a setup and setup of a series of fabric parameter able to quantify and uh, in effective and synthetic way the existence and the extent of the metastable mechanical behavior to be that can be used into the continuous mechanics model. This is the, the, the recent, there are the recent trends in the research activity in this field within the geotechnical engineering discipline. And there are also a lot a lot of examples also in the past of this fabric parameter. I mentioned it before the coordination number, the average number of lamella per factoid, but we have not, of course, to forget the contribution of Alonso against in unsaturated in the, in the definition of, of the collapsible behavior of unsaturated soil with the unsaturated yield surface. The contribution of an Italian colleague, Borghignoli, with the metastable secondary consolidation coefficient, beta, the contribution, the outstanding contribution of John Barland with the sedimentation uh, in his uh, ranking lecture 1990, uh, with the sedimentation uh, compression line, uh, some contribution from Sakharov and, my and myself uh, from some kind of, uh, of, uh, of tailing of, uh, of, uh, of waste, uh, the structure line. Uh, the contribution of Ota and Santa Marina, fabric tensor, coordination number, already mentioned, the standard deviation of the bronze rate on the coordination number, and also, and also some parameter from my colleague Dominiani and myself in terms of fabric parameter that are the effective fixed charge concentration on the, on the quick clays on the active place, the average number of platelet per factoid is something similar to the coordination number and the fabric boundary surface. In this case, this, uh, this fabric parameter were used not, not only to predict the, the, the swelling properties of the material, the mechanical behavior, but also in particular the uh, parameters uh, related to the hydraulic conductivity of this material when uh, this kind of material when are used to confine subsoil pollutants. I would ask uh, what time I have still available because I am sure to have exaggerated a little bit already now. But uh, let me tell me <laughs> sincerely what, uh, what, what I can do. So just uh, uh, Let's say five, ten minutes for uh, for uh, a short and, and uh, quick description of uh, uh, the example of uh, interaction of the geotechnical engineering interaction with uh, a collapsible soil, fine granite soil. That's it, the soil that characterizes the underlying uh, natural layers uh, under the runway, runway number three of the International Airport of Rome. 
In this case, uh, we have a flat area, then no stability problem, but we had uh, serious uh, functionality problems uh, due to the huge sediment experienced by the, by the runways, uh, pavement and uh, embankment uh, during uh, uh, 30 years from the end of construction. In about 30 years, the pavement of runway number three and parallel taxiway have suffered maximum sediment ranging from about two to three, I would say four meters, with both longitudinal and transverse very important differential sediments. Primary and secondary consolidation sediment were mainly due to the clay, silt, and pit formation of a total thickness greater than 40 meters and localized in the southern area of the runway and taxiway. Differential sediment of pavement surface have led to frequent remake and leveling works on the pavement in order to enhance the superficial water discharge. Nevertheless, total sediment have progressively reduced the efficiency of the surface water runoff and also the efficiency of the removal system with the consequent closure of the runway during significant, significant meteoric rain. This is just uh, a picture of the, of the sun raining uh, event. Uh, of the of the water, the problem of uh, aqua planning for uh, for the aircraft. Uh, but uh, I repeat, in particular, the problem was uh, the difficulties is uh, in uh, in uh, expelling the water from the pavement uh, during the severe meteor meteorological event. This is a section, a longitudinal section along the axis of uh, of the runway. I am not going into detail, but uh, what I would like just to point out is this is the south area, and this is the thickness of the soft clay and pit deposit. The northern part of the, of the runway has, uh, is in better condition in terms of uh, subsoils, uh, because uh, we have uh, not uh, no, no anymore the clay, but uh, uh, but let's say some city sand with a good consistency in comparison with the southern part of the, of the runway. The cold penetration test resulted in an idea uh, to the expert in the room and, uh, and uh, by the, in, in, uh, in the connection by in the video uh, of, the, of the very small uh, resistance of uh, the southern part of the uh, of the, the subsoil. In this figure are important in, in particular the two plots uh, on, uh, on the left, uh, on the left end uh, of the slide, uh, where uh, in the top uh, plot uh, there are uh, the, the, the trend of, uh, of uh, the load pressure generated by the runway embankments, uh, the runway embankments and uh, uh, and the pavement uh, in two different uh, sections. This is the phase of construction. This is the phase of uh, when the when the embankment uh, was uh, submerged by the by the the weak clay deposit and was completely uh, swallowed in uh, in uh, in the Weak clay uh, in the weak clay uh, formation that I mentioned before, and uh, in the bottom plot uh, you can appreciate in different session the trend uh, in around uh, 30 years of the sediment, the primary consolidation, the secondary consolidation that uh, uh, was still lasting after 30, 35 years from the construction. This is due to, to a progressive collapse of the fabric of these formations. This figure is rather uh, uh, specific, but uh, the difference, uh, but it's clear to all of you, I think, uh, the difference between uh, the, the sedimentation compression line and the invasive compression line, uh, fabric parameters identified by Parkland, um, of uh, the, the different behavior of uh, 
the sample uh, and the undisturbed sample taken from under the footprint of the runway, where the soil, the clay, has already experienced a almost complete collapse. This is a normal behavior, not the behavior of a collapsible fabric, of a soil with, soil with collapsible fabric. This is the, let's say, peculiar behavior of uh, a fine grained soil, where the original position in terms of tail parameter, void index, and confining stress uh, is uh, far from the two lines that, in some way, range a normal in brackets behavior of a clay. Uh, there are two sections in this, uh, in this, uh, in this slide. The, on the top, uh, a normal section without the formation in the scale. In the bottom, the same section with the vertical scale that is enlarged in order to give you the idea of how the, uh, the, the <laughs> original embankment of the runway and taxiway, and there were four meters, around four meters above the ground, the natural ground level, were completely submerged, but uh, in 30 years, completely sucked, if you want, from the underlying weak clay. The remediation measures consist of a lightening, of kind of lightening work. And it was really, at the end, the final possibility, if not to remake completely or be located in another place, the, 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 the waste. Um, the remedial, uh, the, the remedial uh, action consists of the excavation of part of the original sand and gravel embankments and the substitution of, uh, uh, of the excavated material with uh, a light clay aggregate. Um, light, the, 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 English term is a light expanding clay aggregate. That is as a unit weight, uh, let's say, many times uh, lower than the sand, the original sand. Okay. Then you have, uh, you reach in this case, You decrease in this case the pressure of uh, this manufacturer on the on the natural deposit and uh, uh, the, the work uh, the remedial work were successful since uh, we are able not only to stop the settlement the secondary long-term settlement but also to gain something with uh, a rebound uh, an uplift of uh, the of the runway pay. And this is the last uh, technical slide that compare, in particular, the theoretical, the red line, the theoretical predictions and uh, the monitoring uh, results uh, along one of the most critical sections. As you can see, during the, uh, after the lightning work, uh, the secondary settlement was not only stopped, uh, but was uh, also able to exploit some swelling trend of uh, this uh, active place in order to recover it in, uh, in not so significant way. But, uh, but uh, what is important is uh, also the duration of this kind of remedial work. Uh, you can uh, observe also a, a back uplift of, uh, of the surface of the runway. Uh, something similar, also if uh, uh, the material is uh, completely different, is uh, the remedial action that was uh, designed and, and was uh, realized by, by uh, the group of the Pisa Tower, that uh, also in this case was a lightning work, extracting a material from the from the upstream part uh, of the tower foundation in order to produce a back inclination of a uh, few tenths of centimeter and that 
for the moment, made the tower completely stable. So, finally, I hope not uh, having uh, made you too bored, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I take the occasion at the end to uh, thank, uh, in particular, I, I repeat, but it's uh, really my pleasure to do this, the Technical University of Civil Engineering on Bucharest, the Rector, the, uh, the President of the Senate, uh, the Hydrotechnical Department and the Geotechnical Group of this University. The Geotechnical Group that says, uh, let me say, that, um, that is uh, very, very active, both uh, uh, at the national and the international level, uh, is uh, consists of uh, mainly young, very young, young or very young people that are giving us very strong contribution internationally uh, from the European group to the International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. Then uh, I have to thank the Romania uh, Geotechnical Society for Soil Mechanics uh, and Geotechnical Engineering for uh, the cooperation and in particular again for the contribution that uh, this society is uh, giving uh, to the, is offering to the International Society with the organization of many conferences, and in particular the next Anuga conference will be will take place in, uh, in Bucharest. Thanks again to my mentors already quoted before, the late Professor Manolio and Professor Mikoski. And uh, I would like also really to share this uh, uh, award this recognition with uh, all my colleagues and friends and in particular with my co-worker of the environmental geotechnics group of the Polytechnic of Hydroia. Also the PhD student and the postdoc that worked in cooperation with the with the Technical University of Civil Engineering in Bucharest in the past and uh, still in the present. And finally, and in particular for the patients that uh, they show, my wife and all the members of my family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, now if someone from the public would like to say something. If not, we will uh, proceed to the closure of uh, the ceremony by listening again to uh, Gaudiamo's Digitur. And after that, we will invite you to write a few words in uh, our honor book. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you.